with wild animals. And then that's been used in all the studies on mitochondrial DNA, white chromosome tests, and single nucleotide polymorphisms that have only used the genes from animals that looked like dingoes. So we have this massive bias in all the dingo research that I think is actually clouding our idea and clouding our concepts of what a dingo is and how we should manage it. Are they dingoes? The test said that she was only 75%. She looks like a dingo. She's acting like a dingo. That's what had happened to a domestic dog if you left it out in the bush and probably get killed by a kangaroo. It's from a photo of a dog up in the Hunter Valley. It got kicked by a roo when it was chasing it. And there's your domestic dingo. So it's a pedigree. So it's still a pedigree. You can have a pure pedigree of a true species. Right? Because dingoes have gone through this whole natural selection process since they've been in Australia. 4,000 generations to evolve into this site. So when the dogs did arrive in Australia, they probably reverted back to this wolf-like existence because they had such a long time. And we can see that in all of the footage, how they start to actually live and act like wolves and how they're maintaining a function. So I think we should try to stop using the word hybrid because it's uh, mis being, being used inappropriately. And maybe start to look out for this whole cultural perception of what a dingo is because it is actually making it harder for us to manage the whole ecosystem compassionately. This whole compassion conservation idea. And adaptive science. Science is the only thing that accepts the change is going to occur all the time. So this is another change that needs to be everyone needs to be made aware of. That's the definition that I say. I say base it on their annual breeding cycle, the fact that they live communally and there's going to be minor genetic and phenotypic changes between populations. I mean, the people that breed dingoes, say you have an Alpine race and you have a Fraser Island race and you have a Blue Mountains race and you have a desert race, but they're all still dingoes. And how's that? You guys, I haven't seen any shoes from yet. Is there anything? <laughs> <laughs> So there's this cultural transmission that I think we need to start to be conscious of, just to raise awareness and to start to think about things a bit differently. If dingoes are controlled, then livestock predation has been shown to increase. It was published by Lee Allen, except it was quickly quietened as well. Ben Allen published some stuff as well from South Australia, and then he had to change his results, or he, he sort of asked for it to come back so he could do the stats again. Most of the, ca most of the times, most cases, control seems to be making the problem worse. And how can we determine competition in the first place? The way I see it is that dingoes will go through the peak and fade of other ecological systems. So if rabbits peak, then the dingoes will peak to get control of the rabbits until the rabbits are back down at an equilibrium level. If suddenly there's 10,000 livestock patrolling through their territory, then the, the dingoes are going to say, well, we need to get these guys under control, because if we don't, they're going to wreck the habitat for everybody else. Do they think that way? <laughs> <laughs> so one way to do it is to bring Suzanne Stone out to Australia and say, how can we decrease attractants and increase deterrence to help stop livestock predation? In the end, dingoes do all the same stuff as wolves we've seen in the traffic cascade studies. They prey on stuff, they compete with stuff, they redistribute. And they have this confounding effect on the ecosystem. Since I started my research, well actually this is down towards Mittagon Way, a revegetation project. Just look at the fences, it's all barbed wire, both sides, runs for a few kilometres. All these plants have protective guards over them. It's 
quite a bit of work, quite a bit of man hours, and they may not all survive because we might have a drought next year. This is in the middle of my site. You've got mm. second stage succession already. So you've got some acacias mm. here in the front mm. and some eucalypts growing in the back. So I've just been looking into this recently and doing some measurements of the trees. Here you can see once again, these trees are growing themselves. You don't need to actually put all the man hours into it because dingoes will save us some money on environmental restoration projects if we get the right definition for a dingo. So I think it's fitting to sort of acknowledge the five freedoms and think what the management plans are doing. So I particularly like the one freedom from fear and distress. I mean, when an animal's caught in a trap, it'd be scared out of its brain and it'd be very distressed. And I also like the freedom to express normal patterns of behaviour, which is a lot of what I just showed you all in that video footage. Mm. 